welcome to the Campervan channel, the YouTube channel for all things VW Camper. This video is part of a series on the whole process of transforming a Volkswagen Transporter into a fantastic VW Camper Van. What happens to your van once you hand it over to a professional converter? It's not a detailed guide on converting a van yourself, just a sneaky peek at how the professionals do it, the process that you normally don't get to see. So you've bought your van, you've found your converter, you've thought about all of the things that you want to be included in the conversion, paid your deposit, waited for your slot in the converter's production schedule, and finally, the conversion is ready to begin. When we get a van in, we fully strip it, take all the panels off so you've got a, a bare van to start with. And is this so that if it's a panel van or it's a minibus or whatever, you actually strip it back to start with the same vehicle every time you take Exactly, so they're all the same to start off with. Next job, sawing a massive hole in the roof, if you're having a pop top that is. Now whether it's a new van or pre-loved, it's not a job for the faint hearted. People can think it's a bit daunting cutting a big hole in the roof of a new van and we do train people to fit roofs as well. However, once you've cut a hole in a van, it doesn't really matter whether it's 10 years old or brand new, it's still someone's pride and joy. The hole is obviously for the pop top, but does that not sort of affect the rigidity of the van? It does, but you get all strengthening frames that you fit to the van before you fit your roof, which then retains the integrity of the van. And there's a template so your, your pop-top roof just literally fits into that space. Yeah, it just goes straight on then you go from there. More holes will be cut in your van if you're having windows fitted. A pair of centre windows are pretty essential, but you may also be having windows fitted in the rear panels, rear doors if you have them, or a tailgate. You mark out where you're going to cut your window out. Personally, we fully mask all the van off and then we actually jigsaw the windows out. We don't use grinders because then you've got hot metal and stuff like that then you prime the edges. We put some like little rubber U-shaped channel all the way around to cover it all up, and then you just bomb the window on. The floor of a transporter is absolutely fine for carrying cargo, but it doesn't make for a cosy camper. That's because it doesn't provide enough sound or heat insulation. So the floor is ripped out to reveal the van's original metal ribbed floor. So what you have to do is you have to fill all those spaces with little packers, then you insulate it and then you put floor on top and then it means when you bolt your seat down and when you put your units down it's all nice and solid and it doesn't move and it all stays nice and flat. And even things like the steps come out? Yeah, because the step is the wrong step, it's not the right height for the floor you're going to put in, so that all gets taken out. And if you are having a slider for your bed eventually, that would be the point where the sliders went? That, yeah, the slide frame would go in at that point in time. During the strip out, your converter will also remove any protective wood or cardboard panels that are attached to the walls or doors to get down to the van's bare shell. That's because the van's walls also need to be insulated. You need insulation in a van for sound deadening purposes, but also to keep yourself warm in winter. And what do you use? We personally just use earth wool. We don't use anything else because we find you need the panels to breathe. Um, so if you take a van apart for any damage in the future or anything like that due to a crash. It's all nice and dry inside and effective that is all you need. And then the insulation is covered up with your panels? Yeah so we, they, we then re-panel the van with our panels that are all properly screwed to the van and then you carpet on top. The final layer looks like carpet but it is in fact a very stretchy fabric that's used to trim the interior of most camper vans. It evens everything out and provides even more insulation. We use actually bell trim is what we use and then you get a high temp adhesive and then you spray it on the van and then you apply the carpet to the van shaping it around all the wheel arches and other bits and pieces. And that is a tricky job? It's tricky if you've never done it before but obviously we do about four a week so we, we, we've got fairly quick at it. <laughs> I think you did say that if you're thinking of doing a DIY conversion, this is probably the thing that you should make sure an expert with the... Well, no, I mean, we have had lots of people who do it themselves, but they find it's a lot trickier than they first thought. Some converters will just do the trimming for you if you're tackling the rest of the conversion yourself. Another very complex process is installing the electrics. 
I think the, the blurb you gave me when I got my van said that in terms of the electrics, there's something like 20 double insulated components in it and 24 metres of electrical cables. So if you were starting from scratch, it would take you forever. However, we've got a loom that fits exactly, that just plugs in, that we effectively put in the van that's been designed for us and it takes minutes. However, we had to get that designed for us, which is quite time consuming. Because the electrics are quite complex, aren't they? You're running off mains when you're hooked up at a campsite, yeah. but you're also relying on your van's battery or at least a leisure battery, doesn't it? How, yeah. Is it complicated to make those all work together? Basically, you get a dedicated control unit that's got all your 240 supply, and then you have a set of 12 volt fuses, and effectively, it should all just work automatically. So when you plug into the mains, it energizes your 240 sockets and then automatically charges your leisure battery. It's likely that your hob and, if you have one, an oven, are powered by gas. You've got to fit a gas locker. We get all ours checked by Nextail company who comes and tests it. You've got to have a carbon monoxide detector. You've got to have a fire extinguisher. Depending on how many appliances, you've got to have certain vents in the floor. The more appliances you have, it increases the amount of vents you've got to have in your van. Personally, we only fit one gas appliance, which is the cooker make sure they issue you with a proper certificate saying that the gas has been fitted properly and tested. And the last of your utilities, water. Most vans will have a water tank with fresh water inside it, hidden away somewhere inside. In our vans, you get an 18 litre internal tank that fills up from the back and it's got a little electric pump and it pumps out when you just pull the tap on and off. And the big thing to remember about those is winter, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, ours you've got a drain tap underneath, so in winter you can drain it all the way down and I always do that. But it shouldn't freeze because it's actually inside the van hour tank. But some people fit external tanks and you've got to worry about that. That's most of the prep work done by now, so your converter can start to fit the furniture. That's the cupboards and cabinets that make up most of your interior. Many converters hand build their own units to their own designs. Others may fit off-the-shelf units made by specialist manufacturers. The units are fastened securely into the van and finished off with fridges, sinks, hobs and electrical items inserted. And then the final job, adding the bed. The bed that goes in is the last thing to be fitted. Depending which model it is, but most of them we put all the cupboards in first and then you lift the bed in through the sliding door, lift it backwards and then fix it down. Very firmly. Mm. And then it's uh, ready for handover. And then off you go, yeah. There's a lot more detail about the whole process of converting a camper and, of course, buying one in this great little book, VW Campers for Beginners, written by yours truly, and there are links to ebook and printed versions of it in the blurb below this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click on that bell icon, and then you'll hear about every new video that comes along. For now, thanks for watching. <laughs>